I received a new package from Amazon today. This is a... What is it called? Well, it doesn't say on there, but I believe it is a Wow Stick 1F Plus. A new cordless screwdriver that I ordered. So it came in this box, of course, inside another bigger Amazon box. Uh, but let's see what we got. Yeah, Wow Stick 1F Plus. A uh, bunch of stuff in... Presumably in, like, uh, Chinese. Can't read it, uh, but here I can. So here is the box. Okay, so let's open this. It's actually quite heavy for whatever's in here. Lightweight. Not a lot of stuff here, but let's see, that's actually like a couple pounds. Let's see what's inside of it. is really quite fancy. Um, like an anti-static uh, or magnetic mat of some sort. The screw pad. Uh, bits group, bits group, bits group. Some accessories. One of these I would expect to be the actual screwdriver. This is a case. Interesting, it's magnetic. Got some magnets in there. Ah. Accessories. Dual power screwdriver. There we go, so the actual screwdriver itself, not all that big. Came pre-charged, it's got a little light that'll come on in the end, USB plug in the back. They definitely put some attention to the packaging, so there's all kinds of bits. One of the reasons I bought this one rather than some of the other ones is it had a lot of bits. So three tubes of bits, which I think we can put in here. Interesting, they made a case that holds two sets of bits. Or a set of bit and maybe, yeah, I bet you it's supposed to hold a set of bits and the screwdriver. So you two lesser used sets of bits you'd keep someplace else. I'll bet this is the charging stand. Nice, heavy little thing. It's not actually a charging stand. I think it's just a, just a stand. Yeah, because you'd set it nose down on there. On here. I don't know. Stand is, I guess you'd set it nose down there. Kind of, kind of weird. And in here, some more goodies of some sort. We've got a micro USB cable, a magnetizer tool so we can magnetize and demagnetize things. I don't know what this may be a little spudger for taking apart uh, iPad cases. And a little 
jar full of tiny screws. I guess someone who buys this would find tiny screws handy. And of course, you can never be without is the suction cup for removing your smartphone screen. So I've been using the Wow Stick for a couple of weeks now. I figured the best way to review it in my video is to actually get a couple of weeks use out of it. Um, so one of the first things I did is I got rid of the mount that it came with because I don't really like taking up a uh, workbench space with it and I came up with this nice um, wall mount. This was originally something I found on Thingiverse. I customized it myself to make it fit the wall and to have the right number of tubes and stuff to add these quick things for the bits. So now my wow stick is mounted on the wall. Whenever I need it I can get it there, put it in there, and I can plug it into charge really easily. I found that there's only a handful, there's only like three bits that I've been using which are a couple of these hex bits and just one actually of the Phillips bits. So that's what I've got in it now is a Phillips um, Phillips one bit. Pull that out and now we'll, uh, we'll we'll try it out and see how it works on a couple of my projects. Okay, so let's try it out on uh, one of my projects here. This is a power supply project. I think I've probably featured it in some of my videos. I use these little 440 screws together with standoffs um, to mount this between a couple pieces of laser cut acrylic. I've actually got lots of different versions of this. You know, here's a kind of triple one here um, in a 3D printed case. But anyway, let's take a look at this one. I've sort of intentionally, to make a point, I took and I cranked it down pretty tight to make a point. And the point is that this thing doesn't have a great deal of torque. So if you put this on here, we kind of stalled it out. It can't turn it. Um, but that's understandable because this is a precision screwdriver. It's not really um, designed for doing lots of torque. It's got a relatively small motor in it. It's meant to unwind machine screws uh, to save you the tedium of having to turn it with your hand. Um, so if you have a really tight fastener, uh, like I've intentionally made these fasteners tight, you can stick it in there and manually turn it. I mean, just like that, you know, it's like a normal screwdriver. Uh, but once you've broken the initial torque on the fastener, if necessary, push the button and it'll spin the screw out. Let's do this one. So you know, you can probably see I'm having to give it just that little bit of initial oomph with my wrist to, to break that initial torque on those tight fasteners. Um, so yeah, it, it's really convenient for pulling things apart like that. Here, let me put this back together. There we go. So some of the things I like about this, I do like the positioning of the switch. It seems uh, adequately placed to operate with my thumb. Um, it's easy to do forward and reverse. There's no weird, squirrely, pressure-activated switch or sliding thing or something. It's just forward and back push buttons. Um, the length of it is good. Um, it seems to have no user serviceable batteries. That's just fine. Um, it does have the jack up here for charging. It, I've been able to charge it from my USB charger just fine. It's just micro USB, so any old micro USB cable will work. The magnet holds the bit pretty well. The you know, bit obviously doesn't fall out. Um, it's geared down pretty good, so it really, if you want to put manual torque on it, you can put quite a bit of manual torque on the thing. It does have a, a light in the end of it. Um, for illuminating what you're working on. I could see how that could be useful if you're working in like a dark cabinet or something. In my case, I have a well-lit workbench. Light really doesn't, doesn't mean anything to me one way or the other. So let's take a look at the included bit sets that came with it. They're marked X1, X2, and X3. Um, so X1, I think, has all the bits I'm ever going to use which are one, two, three, four, five um, hex-shaped um, Allen. Well, actually, there's seven because they go down to these really tiny ones. Seven different hex-shaped uh, Allen bits, and it's got these uh, one, two, three, four, five, six uh, Phillips bits. 
I don't think I'm ever going to use any slotted bits. So yeah, and, and even of that, I'm probably only going to use a couple of each of these uh, Phillips and, uh, and hex bits. It, it's good to have all of the others in case you encountered something, but I have to think if you ever tried to use a slotted bit with an electric screwdriver, it, it's kind of inconvenient because a slotted bit will like to jump out of a slotted screw. Um, you do got these other bits here, this X2 assortment. It's got these weird star things. It's got star things with a post in the middle. It's got these Y-shaped things. Um, it's got maybe that's like a really big hex bit. Maybe that's yeah, that's that's a big hex bit. Um, I don't see myself using those unless I encounter them in something like a cell phone or a tablet or some weird piece of equipment where a manufacturer has decided to try to. Um, complicate the technician's life by um, having some weird shaped bit. It's nice to have them if you do need them. Over here we have um, some long bits. So there's some Phillips and some, uh, there's a slotted, a hex, and two Phillips over here that are, let me pop them out of there, they're kind of longer than the standard bit. So put it in there like so. You can see it's kind of longer. Um, that would be good if you have like a recessed case uh, where the screw holes recessed in the case. Um, I could see that coming in handy. Uh, it's, again, it's another one of those kind of emergency. Oops, it's a little bit crooked in there. Another one of those kind of emergency situations. It's nice to have that bit if you need it. We've got some bits here that are slotted with a slot in the middle. Um, sure, that comes in handy. I don't know what these are. Some other kind of. Phillipsy and slotted things. Yeah, just lots of weird, funny bits that you might encounter in some custom case. Um, I don't know that I see any Torx bits. Um, well, maybe these things here. These, these could be these star shaped things. Yeah, these are Torx bits here. So that's probably the other thing you're likely to encounter is some Torx bits. So these three sets pretty much got you covered. Um, like I say, I, I figure I'm probably. Um, for most of my use of this tool, I'm going to use about three bits. Um, a couple of the little hex ones and one or two of the Phillips ones. But it's nice having them all. And the tubes work pretty good to keep them in there. As I said, I, I made the uh, 3D mounted mount so I can put these tubes up in the wall and they'll be easy to access if and when I need them. So I'm sure some people will say you really don't need an electric screwdriver. You can just use a normal screwdriver. How many screws do you drive? Um, but it does come in handy. So like right here, you know, I've got this long screw. It fits just tight enough in this Raspberry Pi case that you can't um, just shove it through. You've got to kind of thread it the whole way. I'm using my um, Weeha um, screwdriver here. And yeah, I'm almost there. Okay. Um, there, we got it in all the way. Um, and then do it three more times. It, it gets kind of annoying after you've taken this case apart and put it back together two or three times. So the electric screwdriver, you put it in here and you just sit there and hold it and it just winds the whole thing out. So that's where I think this uh, tool does really come in handy is when you're working on these long machine screws that do have to go a long ways into something. And you'll find that once you start doing a lot of 3D printing and stuff, you'll be encountering a lot of these uh, long machine screws in various cases and stuff that you make. So it was actually this very same Raspberry Pi case right here that prompted me to go out and buy myself an electric screwdriver. So really, that's, that's kind of all I can really demo. I mean, there's just only so much I can show you with a screwdriver. Thank you for watching my video. Please visit my website at www.smbaker.com for more electronics projects and sand rail stuff. Bye.